we've talked so far about uh, having uh, arrays or tuples of uh, items. And there are lots of cases where we want to be able to iterate over that, that set of items. So this is where we get into uh, for loops. So for loops behave a lot like what we see in other languages. Um, uh, but they are a little bit more general than what we see in a lot of cases. So, so specifically, uh, we can iterate over any collection, whether it's an ar array or, or not. The collection can, can be an explicit group, uh, such as the, the list that we've talked about, or they can be produced by something called an iterator object. And what this object will do is it, every time it gets queried, it produces a new item. And once it's done, it, it produces an end of uh, end of collection uh, signal, and that's the the point where the for loop will uh, terminate. For lists and uh, tuples that we've already talked about, uh, the elements are visited in index order. So element zero is first, one, uh, etc. And just like with our if statements, the body of our for loop is going to be indented. So we'll do a few examples of that. Okay. Before we do some examples, I, I did want to show you one uh, quick example of how uh, how to use iterators. Uh, there's a function that's built into Python called range, and what it does is it doesn't return a a list or an array of, of uh, some items. It produces an iterator. So if I, for example, call range five, uh, that's going to produce an iterator that generates an order zero, one, two, three, four. And, and it, then it's done. It does not actually produce the, the five. For uh, range uh, with two parameters, the first parameter is your starting point. The, the second parameter is your ending point. And, and it's going to iterate uh, I inclusive of the start and exclusive of the end. So two and five uh, will produce uh, two, three, four. For the three parameter case, uh, it is start, stop, and uh, step. So a range one, five, two will produce just the one and the three. Again, the five is uh, not included in the, uh, the the list of items that gets generated. Okay, so we'll start with an explicit list here. I think this is our list from uh, earlier. And now uh, let's iterate over this list. The syntax is a little bit different than what you're used to seeing in C or C++ or Java. Um, and you, you actually do see some of this kind of thing in, in Java, but not, not often. So, so what this for statement says is I, I have a, a collection of things. In this case, it's a, a list and we're going to iterate through that list and at each step through the for loop, the, this variable V will be assigned to one element of, of that list. Note the colon here, which, which says that in a new block is coming. Uh, so uh, Jupyter actually do the indentation for us. So in our case, we'll just print out the, those items. So if I now execute this, what you'll see is uh, the, the list in order uh, printed out one at a time. Likewise, we can we can be a little bit more uh, fancy here. So we might want to know what the sum is of all of the items in a list. So here we're just creating this temporary variable that's the cumulative sum. And uh, notice that uh, this next line, this print line here, uh, it falls outside of the the block because it is uh, not indented, and so that will be executed at at the very end. Actually, just to make this clear, we'll say item. So so here, this this first print line. Uh, is part of the block because it is indented. So that'll be executed once uh, every time through the for loop. And then this final line here, because it's not indented, it's not part of the, the for loop. 
So let's execute that. So we get to see all of our individual items and then uh, get to see what the uh, final sum is over the in entire set. Uh, sometimes it's convenient to be able to uh, explicitly index the items in an array. Uh, and this is where, for example, range, uh, th this range function might come into uh, handy. So let's go ahead and do an example with that. So, um, so first let, let me do just an example with range. So let's say for i in range five, so again, this range five, ultimately it's going to produce a sequence of zero, one, two, three, four, but it doesn't actually produce a list. It produces an iterator that gets queried at each step through this for loop. And we'll just print out that, that value just for fun. Execute that, and there, there's our zero through four. Um, we can rewrite our, our summation. In, in terms of this index variable. And in this case, we wanna be sensitive to the length of, of our list that we're working with. So the len function will do that for us. So here we're explicitly uh, indexing into my list, uh, starting with zero, then to one, uh, et cetera. And we'll finally print out the result. And we should end up with the same result as we as we had before. And indeed we do. So that, that completes a, a few quick examples of how to use for loops, and we'll see plenty more as we get uh, further into the semester.